Hello, this is Robert Kelly, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of how you create a narrated PowerPoint presentation. I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint 2007, and for the screencast, I'll be using Jing by TechSmith. And here's our little Jing son. To make the screencast, right now I'm in normal view of PowerPoint, so you could actually come in and edit these. And along the left is my navigation panel. I'm going to go ahead and start that screencast. So I'm going to the, down to the Jing Sun, and I'm going to go to the crosshairs where it says Capture. I'm going to click on it. Go to the top left, and you'll notice that as I drag to the bottom right, the resolution of the screen that I'm going to be recording is uh, displayed. So right now, the screen resolution is 278 by 233. It's just at the bottom right of my crosshairs. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And it ends up, in case you can't see it, at 412 by 310. Now that I have let up uh, on the um, crosshairs, I have identified the area I'm going to record. And Jing is asking me what I want to do with that area. I could make a picture of it or uh, go ahead and do a screencast with video. I'm going to do that. It's letting me know that my mic's on and it's giving me the countdown. Hello, this is Robert Kelly, and I'm going to be giving you a presentation on how to make a good narrative PowerPoint presentation. Okay, I've just clicked the pause button, so whatever I'm sharing with you right now would not be on this Jing screencast. Let's go ahead and keep going. But before I do, I'm just going to move to the next slide. There we go. Now I'll start it up. Your screen capture area should be as small as possible, but still visible for a good clarity so that your students can easily read it. The reason why you want a small uh, capture area is that the smaller your capture area, the smaller your eventual file size, making it easier on uh, connections, internet connections that might be a bit slower. Also keep in mind that many mobile devices are limited to a 640 by 480 resolution. So it could even work with, for example, 639 by 479, but 641 by 481 would not work. When you go ahead and screencast your PowerPoint presentation, you want to be in normal view where you could actually be editing things. And use your screencast program and go to the top left and drag to the bottom right and indicate that it will be this smaller slide that you're going to be recording. Why not go into slideshow view? Because if you do that, your slide appears on your entire monitor screen and that would be a huge area to record resulting in a very large uh, file size. In terms of accessibility, you want to make your presentations verbally uh, rich so that if someone is listening along and they can't see your presentation, it'll still make sense to them. That'll help your visually impaired students. It'll also help those who perhaps are just listening on their iPod. You also want to include sufficient text on the slides uh, or an alternative document or closed captioning. An alternative document might just have a summary of your presentation, for example. This will benefit uh, those who are hearing impaired or those, for example, who may not have speakers to be able to follow along your presentation. Doing this will not only help people uh, with impairments, but you're also giving your students two different routes by which they can learn the material. When you're recording, you want to find a quiet area. Use a high quality microphone to reduce any static. And you also re want to reduce electrical interference by keeping the microphone cord away from the computer. Uh, I don't know about you, but if my cell phone rings next to my speakers, the speakers buzz. By keeping my microphone cord as far from the computer as possible, I reduce that interference. Here are some useful tips. Keep the presentation short, three to seven minutes. Go with several short lecturettes as opposed to one large lecture. Makes it easier for students to jump to the topics that they need to learn. Treat your arrow as a pointer. Use a large font size. So in this case, my font size was uh, 40 and 36, and actually use a font size around 60 for my headings. And go beyond just text. Include images, videos, websites. You can always pause your screencast, jump to something else, and start up your screencast and record it. Okay, hope that this was useful to you. All right, so now I'm in Jing uh, as before, and I've stopped my presentation, and let's check it out. Hello, this is Robert Kelly, and I'm going to be giving you a presentation on how to make a... There you go. I think it looks good, and it'll be ready to upload. Hello, this is Robert... I can upload it either to Screencast, if I want to keep it... Uh, specific to just my class, or maybe I'll upload it to YouTube and share with my class and perhaps the entire world. All right, take care.